Hello people. Keep saying I was going to do a monster pickup video, um, which I have actually already recorded. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a bit of a cough thing going on. I think I've got this being in that car with some people the other day. But <clears throat> right, anyway, I won't blame them. It's fine. Uh, there was two games that I forgot to put into the um, like the pickups video, so I thought I'd show them now, uh, only because. I show a horror game which I was going to play uh, as something in October but it turned out that I played a different game instead um, which was this so yeah I picked up House of Ashes it's uh, the third one in the Dark Pictures anthology um, yeah it's set in like um, uh, Iraq in 2003 I think it is with during the war and yeah you go to look for weapons of mass destruction and find some weird stuff in a cave underneath. But yeah, it's I think it's the best one since um, Until Dawn of this style of game. Like, interactive horror movie. So yeah, really good game. And the other one I wanted to show off was <laughs> the game that I really wanted that I've been waiting for this month. I've been waiting ages for it. I played the beta for it. Like, the closed beta. Then I played the, um, like the open beta. So, finally I picked up <sighs> Riders Republic. So yeah, this is the sequel to Steep. So where Steep was all kind of like winter sports. Uh, this has, this has included um, like road and downhill mountain biking, which is actually really good fun. Again, it's another, the only downside to this game is the physical version is probably pointless because one day it's going to be a coaster because it's online only. But yeah, really good fun. I've played tons of this so far and got hardly anywhere with it. But yeah, great game. I, I just get addicted to the downhill mountain biking on it. It's good fun. But yeah, I just wanted to add this bit in before. Um, because the video that's going to come after this little bit. Uh, I had to record it old school style. With just my hands in front of a camera. Because there was too much stuff. I wouldn't have been able to get a chair and the stuff in here. So hopefully there's some decent stuff in there. If there's anything you see coming up in the following video. Let me know. Let me know if I've picked up some decent stuff, what I should play, all that kind of jazz. Because towards the end I have to rush it because I always run, run out of uh, space on my camera. That is how um, that's how long the pickups video is. So I apologise now. So if you, if you do sit all the way through it, thank you. I'll be super impressed. And by the way, I'm having to look really oddly that way because I've, for some reason, my camera is slightly offset and I don't like staring directly at the camera. It freaks me out. So anyway, see you in a bit. I don't know why I said that. You're not going to see me again. Only in a video I've already done. It's coming up now. Right, here goes. Let's do this then. This is a, this is a mammoth pickup. This is everywhere, all around me. I imagine my camera won't even last long enough for this. But right, start this off. I'm getting a Red Bull. It's very early, so I'm swigging some of this. I've had to make this proper ghetto setup. I didn't know it's proper old school style behind the camera because there's no way I could fit this around me and a chair in here so I'm on the floor my knees are gonna kill but never mind and I can see myself knocking this Red Bull off the shelf behind all over everything that wouldn't be good okay yes I think I haven't done a pickups video in about is it two months maybe a month I don't know if it's a month that's kind of worrying but right, what we're we looking at here, this very beat up old Game Boy. Yeah, I found this, um, it was in like a second hand, like vintage store. I went in asking if they had any video games. He goes, nah, we don't do them. But at home, I've got a beat up old Game Boy. So I can't remember how much this was. A couple of quid, something like that. Fiver, might be a tenner, I don't know, something like that. But yeah, it does actually work. And it came with a copy of tennis. And it's got this cool old label on the back. But um, yeah, I was talking to RetroKit. He said he would be able to retro break this for me. Um, and he'd send me a uh, kit to do a backlight on the screen. So when, at some point I will sort this out. I've held on to this for so long without sending it to him because I needed to show it in a video and I've had it forever. So yeah, this old Game Boy. I don't know where I'm gonna put this stuff. I did have this little stand that I could stand things on. So let's see what it works out like. Let's have a look. If not, I'll just move the stand. Um, 
I've got some kind of chronological order to this, I think, but I'm not sure. But we'll we'll go with that. So, yeah, shit, where did I put it? <laughs> there. Okay, we'll start with some charity stuff. In the window of a charity shop near me, they had a game that I wanted forever. It was a Wii game. They had a Wii bundle there. It was uh, 250 quid for this Wii bundle, but I only wanted one game. So they weren't splitting, they weren't splitting. In the end, I thought, I wore them down, and they sold it to me. Which was Silent Hill Shattered Memories on the Wii. So yeah, it came nice and complete. But it did cost me 20... 25 pound? I think it cost me. This is a long time ago. I should have wrote some of this down. Never mind. Well, the stand's okay, because when I'm not doing anything, I can leave something on the stand. All right. After that, I had a few other charity pickups, just random ones. Ones I didn't really, well, a couple I needed for my 360 set and a random DS game. So I'll show these off next. So let's, let's work out how to do this. Let's just move this over here, put the next game in there, which is this weird race driver, create and race. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I'm guessing it's uh, some part of the race driver grid kind of series since it's Codemasters. But it looks like it's just for creating tracks and racing around them. But I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. But a bit different, I thought. Then came some great titles. And I say great titles. For my uh, Xbox 360 set. First up is Dance Central 2. This has eluded me for a very, very long time. I don't know why I couldn't find this ever. I just, I couldn't. And it was a pound in a charity shop. So, I think CEX sell it for like £2 or something. So, it's not too bad. Switching these things over on this little stand might get annoying. But, at least it leaves something there. Up next is another Kinect game I found. This one wasn't too bad. Again, it was a pound. So we got Just Dance 2014. You know what I might do? I might just leave an interesting title on there. Every time I get to the next interesting title, it can sit there. But yeah, again, this was a pound. It was all complete. In a charity shop. When I say interesting title, like Dance Central 2 is not interesting, but never mind. And this is probably the best one for a pound. This is the Game of the Year edition of Walking Dead. It's a game I've played like quite a few times before. I'm pretty sure I've done this, but this is the one which comes with um, the whole of the first season and the uh, 400 Days like expansion. But yeah, it was a pound in a charity shop again. So hopefully these lights I've got set up, because again, I'm recording. Uh, recording? Recording early in the morning, so I needed some kind of light source. You know what? That's more interesting than Dance Central 2, isn't it? That can sit there. See? Professional. We'll do this. Nice and professional. And the final two charity ones for this chronological order thing was one I thought I had. Turns out I didn't. On the GameCube is Tiger Woods PGA Tour 05. So, yeah, it's just Tiger Woods game, isn't it? And Shark Tale on the GameCube. So, both cheap games. So, I think I paid a pound each for them, which is pretty much what they're worth. So, it's all good. Neither of them overtake Walking Dead on something interesting. Right, and up next, we had, well, I've been talking to, I was talking to Feed Me Chicken, and I told him I was working on uh, soft modding a PS1 to um, play imports and stuff. So I thought I was testing around with it um, because he was interested in something. So I bought a Japanese PS1 game that was nice and cheap to test it out to make sure it was working fine, which was Dragon Quest Seven. Yeah, I think this was like five quid off of eBay. Game complete. But it's not really a game I'm going to play because <laughs> my Japanese ain't that good. But it's slightly more interesting than that. So it takes a spot on there. So yeah, I used that to test something. Then I, I sent something to Feed Me Chicken as a trade. Um, that's that's no, no hints there. <laughs> and he sent me some stuff back. So he sent me a selection of PS1 memory cards. So I've got a few different colours. Because I was trying to find PS1 memory cards in this house and I couldn't find any for ages. 
then I, I found a I found a stash room because I needed an official one for something. But yeah, he's a. Uh, I sent him one. He sent me four. <laughs> Not only that, he sent me a few other bits. So on the PS2, he sent me the Mark of Cree. I haven't ever played this. I've seen people online playing it, but that was a long time ago, so I can't remember much about it. I think it's like a. Is it a hack and slashy platformery game? I don't know. No idea. But I'll give it a shot at some point. Oh, I'm trying to find space so I can stand and reach this camera. It's not going too well. And the other one was Scarface, The World Is Yours. Everyone says this is quite good. It's one of those like GTA kind of clones, isn't it? But set in the uh, Scarface kind of uniform. Uniform? Universe. God damn it, it's early. Let's swig some more Red Bull. Oh, listen to me swallow on camera. Okay, then those are the two bigger hitters he sent me. I had this one off of him simply because I needed a manual for it. He said he didn't. He said the case is a bit water damaged. Does that matter? I was like, no, I just need the manual. Just need the manual. Would you marry a party for? So, yeah. Player's Choice Edition. A bit crinkly. But that doesn't matter. It's not what I needed it for. I needed the manual. And the one that I did need was Mario Party 5. So I'm not sure if he showed the stuff I've sent him yet. Uh, I don't think he has. Because I do watch a lot of his videos. <laughs> I also need to record you an intro. I'll do it at some point. But yeah. That was the bits off of Feed Me Chicken. You know what? Mario Party 5 can overtake Dragon Quest. I might actually, actually, I'm going to clear these off because there's more to come now. So let's get these out of the way. Mario Party can stay there. Sake of the memory cards. We'll build a backdrop as we go. Okay. What was next? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Ah, chronologically, it would be this, but this took a while to turn up. <laughs> I, I sent a box of stuff to Eddie. Um, roller court and he sent me a box of stuff in return of course as people do but this got lost in the post and it took ages to turn up but that that was a well it was a saga let's put it that way i will show you what he sent me when i can get to it uh, so much stuff okay we will start with this just pipe mania 3d on the ps1 so only the uh, only the best titles you can tell. So trying to spin these round one-handed is not good. But none of them have overtaken Mario Party Five yet on the interesting interesting pedestal. Uh, this is a game that I've completed on the Xbox War 360. Apart from the DLC, because you can't get all the achievements on it. But I wanted to go for it again on the PS3 and get some trophies, which is nailed. It's a um, like quad bike. Uh, arcade racer it's a bit like pure but faster it's actually a really good game it's just a shame that a lot of it was broken when it originally launched this next one next one is a bit of a hard one to find to be honest with you it's stealth force 2 it's um sequel to stealth force 1 <laughs> but it goes for the midas set and it's one of those ones that doesn't pop up very often this is i don't know was it spanish I'm guessing it's Spanish. But yeah, that, that's a tough one to track down. It is on eBay and that, but it's not one you're just going to bump into. Then we have... <laughs> proper random. A little Blaster Master book. So random. I can put this with my... Uh, what have I got? I've got the Mario movie book. I can put that with this. This is a game I did play on the uh, 360. I don't know if there's a different version of it, but it's a little like puzzle game. If I'm right, is it part, part puzzle and part platformer or something? It's ha Henry Hatsworth. So yeah, this this one just looks pretty interesting. It's been a long time since I played it. It was like quite early on in the 360 days, so I can't remember much. But it does look pu puzzle and platformer. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. 
He knows I'm going for a complete N64 set. I don't have this game yet, but always to get manuals just in case is good. So he sent me the manual for Starshot, Space Circus Fever. The case on this just doesn't shut. I don't know if that's because the, the box it turned up in was absolutely ruined or just because it's a, a cheap box. But yeah, it's uh, the translated version of Police Noughts on the Saturn. So yeah, looking forward to giving that a shot. So Because I'm never going to try and learn that in like Japanese, am I? <laughs> or am I ever going to buy it? And, it? and it's super pricey. And the best one in the box, there are some other bits which I'll show, but is a uh, Shakedown Hawaii on the Vita. So yeah. I think this was the last copy of Shakedown Hawaii I needed. I think I've got it on everything now. But I needed it for the Vita set. And to be honest, I'm going to switch out the Mario Party. Let's put Shakedown Hawaii on there. I've just banged the light. So I don't know what that's done. The two other things that were in the box he sent me was this. He was opening uh, blind boxes of Devil May Cry figures. So... Yeah, he sent me one of his dabbles. <laughs> oh no, I've taken out of the box, can't get, it, can't get it back in. And incredibly randomly, it's a sealed Monster Rancher, Monster Rancher, why can't I talk today? Monster Rancher, collectible card game. So, gonna have to open that up and have a look at it. Cause that's proper retro, that's just cool. Right, I can still add to that. Ah, oh, what came next? Ah, next will be some stuff I bought off of another YouTuber. I bought a few bits off of uh, Rob, Granadino Plays. So, we picked up Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on the PS1. I always thought I had this. I did not. <laughs> so... Needed it for the collection. He picked it up in a charity shop, I think, in one of his videos, and I was like, oh, I need that. Um, it was ages ago. I think he, it's when he went game hunting with Eddie, I think. He said he picked up a couple of uh, sealed Xbox One games, and he held one back for me, which was Shadow of War. So, I have to give it a shot. I'm not sure, I wasn't too fond of Shadow of Mordor. I don't know. I, I like the idea, I like the Nemesis system where you could like take people down. But the fact that they, they do come back, I, I wanted to slowly but surely slaughter the whole army. But it annoyed me that people come back. Uh, also, another one he showed off in a video that he picked up a long time ago. But it's the, the triple pack of Super Mario Bros. Tetris and Nintendo World Cup for the NES. Yeah, I, I just needed it for me, my little NES collection. Which uh, is going to see some love today, to be honest with you. Uh, up next is Isolated Warrior. I think he shared this on a swap shop. Um, is this like an isometric like shooting game? I can't remember. All I remember is I saw it once and it looked interesting. And I can't remember bugger all about it. So I haven't had a chance to try it yet. And then the big one I got off of him. One of his childhood uh, pride and joys. He's, he's kept all these years. I got Mega Turrican off of him. I felt kind of bad buying this off of him because he's had it for so long. But this this is this is in beautiful condition. I'm afraid to touch it. <laughs> you know what? Trying this out again. I suck at Turrican. I do. I really suck at it. But gonna gonna try get good at it. Gonna try. I think, I don't know if this will even fit on here. Are Mega Drive two, games too fat? No, it sits on there. So, we'll have Mega Turrican sitting in the background. Lit up a bit by the looks of it, my little preview. All right, let's clear this off and continue. Shit, where am I gonna put this? I don't know. Uh, a little shelf down here, let's fill this up. Okay, up next. 
I think this is what came next. Big Game Al was selling off a lot of NES stuff. So uh, he was asking in the groups if anyone wanted to buy any of it. And of course, like an idiot, I said yes. So I will show that. But first, I'll show you the other bits he put in there. <laughs> First up, it is a copy of Twister Mania on the Kinect. I already have this. I just needed a, uh, I think it was a disc upgrade I needed. So mine was a bit scratched and I could have, could have put it in my disc cleaner, but why not? Uh, this, I thought this needed a new case. Yes, it does. It's Brave, A Warrior's Tale on the 360. It's a little platformer with, uh, it's an Indian arrow head in the front. I thought it was a butt plug then when I looked at it real quick. Um, but yeah, it's just a little, 3D platformer. I remember renting that from Love Film years ago. Had it in my house forever and just never played it. I had to send it back. So I was paying to keep hold of it for no reason. Then we have Burnout Paradise. It's a game I do have, but I didn't have uh, a complete one of it like this. I had it in the multi pack. So it's good to have a standalone. Ah, these were. Slidey where they're clean. And up next is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, another one which I already had, but I had the promotional copy, so the, the front was all faded and like they have that big yellow line across them and they're they're purposely faded. So it's good to have a full art one now. Oh, starting to get some space in here. Alright, on to the NES stuff. Uh a game that I used to love as a kid. The wall jumping mechanics in this blew my mind as a kid, don't know why. Um, I used to borrow it off my mate Nick, uh, and I'd take, when I took my Nez around my Nan's house, I'd sit there playing this on a black and white TV, which made this game much harder. Uh, it was Batman, a video game. So yeah, there's just so much nostalgia with this, just with the, the intro cutscene with the little Batmobile, and the music in this is, this is fantastic. So, glad to have that one back. There'll be a lot of things of I used to play this with someone called Nick. He he had a massive NES collection as a kid. Which was uh up next was Low G Man. I this is one of those games that I always used to play when I went round there and thought, I'll like it this time, I'll like it this time. And then I never did. I remember rightly, you've got it's got quite a lot of a well, I guess it's low G for low gravity, because you can jump really high and you can get in these little mech things, but the I think if you shoot the enemies, they freeze. You've got to like jump on top of them and spear them or something, I can't remember. But I remember it never, never really enjoying it, but always playing it. So it's good to have that. I'm going to give it another shot. Uh, I've been quite busy, so I haven't tried a lot of these things. This one, <laughs> this is my nemesis as a, a NES game. Been after this for ages. It's Prince Valiant. Um, this, this is technically the first, I think this might be the first video game I ever spent my own money on. Because it was a, I don't know if it was a job, what do I think it was a WH Smith? I think it went with John Menzies or something random at the time, which became a WH Smith. But upstairs they used to have a load of NES games hanging on the wall. And me as a kid, looking for all the box art, I thought, oh, what looks good? And I picked this. There was loads of good games there. But I picked this. And this is dreadful. It's a crappy little platformer. I, I remember the first level, you walk through the woods and there's like, logs rolling at you and people just jump out of the bushes and I don't know I want to try and get good at it I want to beat it I used to try I used to try and persevere because I knew I spent money on it and I was upset that I did but I need to I need to see the end of Prince Valiant I always remember it being really hard but it probably isn't that bad some of these I just randomly grabbed so I got Life Force Salamander off the top of my head I think it's a shooter I don't know. On a little road trip, we well, I joined Big Game Out on his road trip, and we found about three box copies of this when we we're out and about. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've I've never actually played Life Force, so I think is it one that's got a different name in a different in like in, in the states. I don't know, but he wasn't selling it for much, so that's why I grabbed it. Uh, up next is Gunsmoke. This is a little. It's a little shooter, a little Wild West one, isn't it? Um, I've just always thought this looked interesting. I almost bought this after watching somebody play it on YouTube. I can't remember who was playing it. 
if I remember. I will put it in the video, but I'm never good at remembering stuff. But yeah, it just always looked interesting, and it is on a couple of like collections and things. I've probably got it on a disc somewhere. But yeah, when Al said he was selling it, I thought, well, you know what? Grab it, and I'll give it a shot. I can't even remember what this plays like. Is this part shooter, part platformer? I can't remember. I remember looking this up and thinking it looked interesting. <laughs> it's the Guardian Legend. I can't remember anything about it. I haven't played it yet. Uh, I'll have, probably have people yelling at me saying what it is. It will come to me. It's one of those ones I know I've seen people playing it and I thought that's good. But yeah, I can't remember. Back to another one from my childhood that I really enjoyed. It's the New Zealand story. Yeah, it's like a little um, puzzly platformer, kind of like almost like a maze kind of platformer, where you play a little kiwi. You have to try. I think it's save your girlfriend, isn't it? But yeah, I used to just really like this. Another one that I used to always borrow off of uh, Nick. So this was good. Not that Nick's ever gonna watch any of these videos. He knows I make them, but he don't watch them. The bastard. Oh, there's me, fat belly hitting the uh, tripod. Up next, I bought this simply because I like the franchise, which is Ghostbusters 2. This isn't the good Ghostbusters 2 game. There's one by HAL um, Laboratories on the NES, which is a good game. This one is not. Um, not much else to say about it. I played it on an emulator years ago, didn't enjoy it. And finally, DuckTales 2. This, out of the two DuckTales games, this was my favourite one as a kid. Um, I don't know why I enjoyed this so much, but when he had it up for sale, I thought I'd got to grab that off him. I don't know why I need it. I bought the cartoon collection on the Xbox One and recently beat this again, um, which was quite fun. It had, the Xbox One version's got like um, boss rush and time trials and stuff, which which was pretty good. Luckily I could still remember where everything was and smash through that pretty quick. But yeah, always loved DuckTales too. So, that is... Uh, why do I never mute my phone? That is the uh, bits that I've got off of Owl. That's nowhere near the end of this pickups video though. Nowhere near. I'm going to have to move these somewhere else. So I brought this table up here. It's got shelves on it. Still stare at the uh, the glorious Mega Turrican. The time drive for what? Ah, shit! There ain't that much space on this table. Okay, so I think this is where we start getting into stuff from October. I wanted to play a different horror game on Halloween, so I picked up this. This is Project Zero. Uh, or Fatal Frame in America, or just Zero in Japan. Uh, this is The Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. It only came out in Japan on the Wii. Um, you can play this in English, but you have to patch it uh, on a modded Wii. Um, but yeah, or you can just play it on an emulator if your PC is good enough. I haven't played a great deal of it so far. It's pretty good. Uh, it's meant to be one of the better ones in the uh, franchise. The only reason I haven't played that much of it is... You have to hold like the Wiimote pretty much flat for when you, because that's like almost like a torch to look around. It it hurts my wrist <laughs> holding it completely flat. Like with every Wii game, I myself just like shit wrists. Probably because I drink no milk and only consume energy drink. So I've probably got brittle bones. Then we had another set of charity pickups. So out and about, I came across, I'll get through these quite quick, F1 2017, um, I think these were, oh, I've I taken the stickers off, can't remember how much this one was, I think these next three games were £5 each, so yeah, I don't know why I bought that for a fiver, but Resident Evil Biohazard, it's what I've got on the PS4, so I played it in VR, but I thought, Get some achievements. Why not? Came across 
Assassin's Creed, uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Jesus, what is wrong with me? I'm having a stroke, can I? Um, well, this next one, I think this was, oh, I've got the price on it. This was £2. We have Mech Assault 2 Lone Wolf. I thought, oh, do I need this? I don't know. But when I opened it up, it had two and one in it. It has this void thing on it, so it must have been taken out of somewhere. But the disc looks all right. But yeah. So, I don't think I've got that. Probably should have checked, but I don't know. My knees are starting to really hurt. Then, all from one charity shop, I found some PS4 games. I found Fallout 4, like Steelbook. This was £2, I think, 2 or £3. Which looks 2, which was £4. I'm trying to remember these off the top of my head. L.A. Noir, which was £2. Call of Cthulhu, which was £5. We Happy Few, which was also £5, I think. And Wolfenstein 2, which I think was £4. I think. I can't remember. It's too long ago to remember this stuff. But I am starting to be able to move in here. I love it. I can move! So yeah, I haven't found anything to top Mega Turrican yet. I don't think there's anything that's going to top Mega Turrican, but I will move it so you're not staring at the state. same stuff all the time. Okay. So, oh no, this was a random purchase. I randomly went into town one day and bumped into a copy of Sherlock Holmes on the Mega CD. Yeah, this was 10 or 12 pounds, something like that. Yeah, it's not the greatest Mega CD game. But it's in pretty good condition, and I thought I'd add it to me Mega CD collection. I'm just making words up now and stopping halfway through words. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we, as I mentioned earlier, I met up with um, Big Game Al, <sighs> Retro Games Revive, Sean, and Paul the Ink Northerner. Sorry, I'm out of breath lifting things because I'm fat. Um, yeah. Met up with them when they were on well they weren't near me but they were they're close enough that i could get to them on their little road trip they were doing down the south coast so we bought some stuff when we were out when we were out and about but there were some gifts and some purchases that i'd done with them beforehand so i'll explain what they are off of paul he was giving away some super cheap ps2 games so <laughs> off of him i got detonator I don't know what this is. It looks like some kind of. It, it, I guess it's some kind of uh, destruction game, but on the back of it, I, I don't don't have a clue. It's got to be some kind of puzzle game, I guess. Um, Dynamite 100. I'm guessing it's 100 little crappy games. So yeah, but I needed it for the Phoenix set. Not that I'm going for a full Phoenix set, but probably should. And one that I'm. I looked through my collection when he showed it, I couldn't find it, but when I went back through trying to catalogue this stuff, because I'm doing that now, so I don't forget, apparently I have this, but I can't find it anywhere, so we've got World War II tank battles, so I don't think I have this, I think I may have accidentally added it to my list, saying I had it, and I don't. Fuck me, I'm going to need new knees after this. Ah. Oh. Right, then I had some stuff, another batch of stuff that I bought off of Al. Well, this, this was a freebie. He sent me MotoGP 08. It's one he just showed recently in a pickups video with this little torn edge, but that's fine. I can sort that out. I'm not a mint collector. A bit of tape will sort that. Okay, so I had a couple extra NES games off of him. First up, I had Bionic Commando. Again, it's another one I used to play around with mate Nick's house. Yeah, everyone knows what this is. Little game, you can't jump. You've got a little kind of bionic arm that you use to grab and swing over things. Good fun. I was never any good at it. In the UK version, you don't kill Hitler, do you? That's in the Japanese one. Um, this is one I, <laughs> I used to play, and I remember nothing about it. So I thought I'd grab it and give it another shot. It's probably dreadful, but I don't know. Swordmaster. I, 
I remember playing it. I remember picking it up and putting it in the NES. Remember nothing about it. So I am gonna get playing through these soon. I haven't double checked whether or not I need this. I'm pretty sure this was the one I needed. <laughs> it was Mega Man 4. I'm pretty sure I have one, two, and three. But currently the NES games I've got where I'm trying to move stuff around in the room is hard to get to because there's a giant TV in the way. So I just took a punt and said that's the one I need. I'm pretty sure it is. And we'll some we'll end with something which we can replace Mega Turrican with, shall we? We have Gargoyles Quest 2. Yeah, this 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 is one I've always wanted to play. I've, I've well, I've given this one a quick shot. Uh, it plays with like a kind of top-down kind of Zelda RPG kind of view, walking around. Uh, then then the main bulk of the game is um, like side-scrolling platformer, where you can float a little bit and spit fireballs and things. It's pretty fun to be honest with you. I'm kind of looking forward to playing some more of this. It's I think is it part of, a, of like the Ghosts and Goblins games? I don't know. I think it is. But yeah, we'll, we'll replace Mega Turrican with it, because that's a bit of a pricey one. But Owl being Owl did me a good deal, so it's all good. I'll actually move these, shall I? Move, move more stuff. Ah, crap, chucking those games around. Luckily, it's a cheap one. Okay. So went out and about on that day. We went round Bournemouth, Poole, Yeovil, I think that was it. But yeah, our first stop was uh, Gamers in Boscombe, and I picked up a couple of games. Uh, the guy in there is genuinely a really nice guy. He's got his own little YouTube channel, so I will put a link to his YouTube channel in the description of this. And go see what he does, because he's got a cool shop. So I picked up three games from him. He charged me £60 for these, so I think it was £60, yeah, £60. So at first, if you're wondering why I went with an American copy of this and didn't go for the UK one, price is the answer to that. There's Um Jamalami, so yeah, it's like the like the female version of Parappa the Rapper, isn't it? But it's a bit more rocky, isn't it, than Brightly. So yeah, now I've got my region free PS1, there you go, I will be playing that one there. So yeah, the the English copy of this on CEX costs more than these three games cost me. So that's why I went with that. Then I picked up two Japanese uh, PS1 games from him. First up we have Shadow Tower. I imagine this will be pretty easy to play in Japanese. It's a dungeon crawler by From Software. It's kind of like the Kingsfield games and the like... It's like a precursor to Dark Souls, but it's literally just walking around, hacking things up. Your weapons break, pick something else up. Um, if I've got like an image of what the screens say in English for stats and that, it'll be pretty easy to play. But yeah, these this is this is complete and in good condition. To be honest, it's in really nice condition. That isn't a crack in the front. There's a like scratch on it, but that's it. So I'm actually looking forward to playing that one. It's one that uh, I imagine Mark, Geordie Slasher Gaming, should should play at some point. He likes his From Software games, and that looks super clunky. But it's one that's always interested me, and when I saw that I had to grab it. And this next one is a strange combination. I don't know how playable this is going to be, but I, I'll be able to work it out, I reckon. It's Racing Lagoon. It's like part RPG, part racing, so it's like a street racing RPG. Um, I'm hoping there isn't too much dialogue between the races and if not I'll just randomly challenge anyone. You kind of like drive around and you challenge people by um, I think flashing your headlights at them and stuff of what I've seen about it but that is all I know but it's a Squaresoft game but again that's complete and in really good condition. So yeah that was the first thing that was from Gamers in Boscombe. Then we went to a couple of CEXs and stuff. I didn't buy anything in Yeovil or anything in Poole. So everything I bought was in Bournemouth. But 
I found a Wii U game I've been looking for for ages in a CEX, which was Devil's Third. Luckily, I came armed with some CEX credit for this trip, so I was able to pick up some stuff that I've been looking for for a while. So yeah, it, I've always been interested in Devil's Third. It got slated, didn't it, when it came out? But we'll see what it's like. I know I haven't got much time left on my camera. This might end and I'll have to re and take everything off of it. And up next is Endless Night Collection of Persona 3 and 5, like the Dancing All Night. Well, Dancing in the Moonlight and Dancing in Starlight. I have this collection on the Vita and I've beat it on there, but the Vita version is Japanese. So I didn't have a clue what was going on in the story. So now I'll be able to play it and actually know what the hell was going on. But really good games. Also in, uh, I went into game and this was down from 29.99 to 4.99. No idea what it is. It's Genesis Alpha 1. It sounds like it's a space station building slash survival game, like a roguelike one. I don't know, 4.99, I wasn't going to say no, was I? When we hit Insanity Retro Gaming in Pool, we met up with uh, Duncan, Willy Weeble. And he had some stuff for me, so I got some stuff off him. <laughs> I got the PS4 version of Sonic Mania Plus. Anybody I mention on here, their, their channels will be in the description. Got Voodoo Vince, the original Xbox. This has a remaster on the Xbox One, which I still haven't played. I haven't played that one either, but it's a platformer where you'll power up as you hurt yourself to hurt people around you, which always looked interesting. Uh, the standard edition of L.A. Noir. I've got the big box chunky one. Which you might be able to see in the background of this, because it's right in front of it there. But no, it's probably off camera. Uh, I got Dark Void off of him, because it had this cool slipcase. And I, I don't have the slipcase version. So, yeah, I'm trying not to go down the variants, but sometimes, sometimes a slipcase, it will persuade me. Uh, got Dark Souls, Prepare to Die Edition. So I think this might have DLC and stuff on it, is what the difference is. So, and I'm also trying not to get all the like collections of stuff, but this one I needed because it's cool. And he said all the uh, codes haven't been used in it, which is the Batman Arkham Collection. It's one you don't see around all too often. So, yeah, he did me a cracking deal on them because he said he bought them all in charity shops. So, it's all stuff that he only wanted like trade value for them. So, it's all cool. All right. I'm just going to start chucking stuff down to the side real quick. Yeah, crap. There's my phone going off. Right, what have I got down to now? Okay. This is the last lot of stuff. My girlfriend sells a lot of stuff on eBay. And she picks up bundles of things and whatever's left over. She, some stuff she can't be bothered to put on eBay or whatever. So she said to me, do I want to have the stuff that I didn't have? Which she couldn't be fucked with, basically. So I said yes. So this is what I got. I'll rattle through these because it's a pretty big bag. LMA Manager 2001, the PS1. FIFA 99, 96, sorry. Platinum. True Pinball. A couple of uh, Switch games that she's got multiple copies of and didn't know what to do with, so she said I could have them. One was Saturday Morning RPG. And the two turret games. So, I've, I've seen, I showed them before. I think she got them out of blind boxes I opened up on here once. Uh, there's some... We go for Basabi James, we've got some Game Boy. So we have Max. To be honest, this one's got a bit of value. So yeah. I just wanted this one. <laughs> it's quite fun, it's just a little um little platformer. It's got kind of like a bionic commando little arm thing you can grab stuff, and you're in like a little suit thing. It's quite fun. Uh Adventure Island. A Japanese version of the Hunt for Red October. No idea why. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a Japanese version, isn't it? Of 
Chase HQ. I don't know how well these are going to come out on camera. Because I've got a little preview, but there. It's too far away for me to see if it's blurry or not. Um, got Bart versus the Juggernauts. And these that I couldn't tell you what they are to save my life. Um, this one is... Is that Poyo? Poyo Poyo? I know one of these is something like that. I think it's Poyo Poyo. This is Mystical Ninja like Goemon game. Um, don't know what this one's called, but it's a little game where you've got to like fit tiles into like a square or <laughs> whatever. It's quite fun. It's one of those stupid little games. And this one is a... I think this is a long running series, but I couldn't tell you what it is. I think there's even a version. I think this series is still going to like Xbox 360 up until, I think, but I can't what it what it's called. Is it Mo, Mo Mataro? Mo? I don't know. No idea. All right, must rattle through these as fast as I can. Okay, so the worst limited run PS4 game that there is, One Way Heroics. I've got this on the Vita. It's dreadful. Uh, a copy, a sealed copy of the Escapist and the Escapist 2. Uh, Trails of Cold Steel. Yeah, I've really got hardly any time left on my camera. <laughs> uh, Sword Art Online. Alice, Aliceization Le, Le Chorus? I don't know. Uh, it was a Sword Art Online game I didn't have. A game that I showed the other day on my... 360 in my blind box but yeah she had a ps4 copy of tropical 5 and little big planet 3 on the ps4 a copy of seal copy of slay the spire on the ps4 see i don't know what most of these are i was just grabbing them because i could use them <laughs> World Snooker Championship 2007 on 360. And a sealed copy of Final Fantasy X-2 on the PS2. Let's move these out of the way. PSP we've got Juiced Eliminator. This one's pretty weird when I opened it up. It's uh, no manual and somebody's replaced the uh, UMD case I think with a clear one because to my knowledge there's no official clear UMDs but I could be wrong. There's a couple of red ones and things so let's be banging the light again. Uh, Earthworm Jim 2. It's in very rough shape that's why she couldn't be bothered to sell it. But yeah, I think it's got no manual either. One that I just wanted to get the trophies out of. Megabyte Ultimate Showdown. Got that on the 360, it's an easy game to finish. Um, Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Another one for the Wii U collection. Yeah, this is a massive bag, hence right where I'm rattling from. One I've got on the PS4 already, it's so ukulele in a possible layer. It's a it's like a um old school Donkey Kong Country style game, maybe by some of the same people. Rage 2. I played Rage 1 on a 360. It was alright, but it, it kind of looked like a dingier Borderlands, like an uncell shaded one when it came out. Uh Project High Rise Architects Edition. So yeah, I guess it's building high rise buildings. One that you'd think would have value but really doesn't, which is Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. An Xbox version of Slay the Spire. <laughs> it's another sealed one. Uh, Risk of Rain 2, which includes Risk of Rain. The, the first one's like a 2D game, isn't it? The, the second one's a 3D kind of like survival game. That's meant to be quite good, if I remember rightly. Um, 
Locks Quest. I think this is a tower defense game. I think. Uh, Rogue Trooper Redo or Redux. Yeah, this is um, a remake of an old like PS2 and OG Xbox game. I can't remember what this is set in a really famous world. I don't know what it is, but it's meant to be quite good. So, uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. I've got this on the Wii U. Didn't have a Xbox One, but we'll give it a shot. Get some, get some achievements. Got Bendy and the Ink Machine. It's a little survival horror-y kind of game, isn't it? But for kids. And one that I started ages ago and never finished, so I got Bloodstained Ritual of the Night off of her. So, it's almost the end of this bag, almost the end of this video. If you've sat through this much of it, I will be impressed, because I couldn't listen to myself talk for that long. The last lot of stuff is some boxed Game Boy Advance games. But nothing special, but we'll have a look. So what the Incredibles. So some of these are real battered, so I'm gonna I've ordered some protectors and I'm gonna iron them flat and maybe undo them and glue them back together and everything. So we've got Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. GT Championship. Robot Wars Advanced Destruction. Colin McRae Rally 2.0. There, this one's proper flat, coming apart. Jackie Chan Adventures, Legend of the Dark Hand. Another one that's falling apart. Pin B, Wings of Adventure. Pretty sure Eddie picked up a, was a PS1 game of that that's quite rare. I don't know. Oh, there's another Game Boy game in there. Uh, I got Incredibles Rise of the Underminer. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. And this one's weird. It's XV Sever. This game, didn't this have a movie tie-in? But the movie was to tie in with the game, but the movie came out first. Then there's two versions of pretty much the same game. And this one, this box looks fake because it's partially printed. But there's a version of it that they, I think they sold. And they did a master system, I think. And sent a lot of U, like US carts, which weren't sold to the UK. So you have this really cheaply printed box, but it more really has a, an American cart in it. Yeah. Either that or I'm talking bollocks and it's fake. But I'm pretty sure there's something weird with this game. But I don't really care. It's a game I actually enjoyed. I used to have a uh, rewritable flash cart for the Game Boy Advance when it came out. And the X vs. 7 games are the ones I enjoyed. Well, one of them was good and one of them was a bit meh. But I can't remember the difference. And the final one is a Japanese version of Tetris. It's not the minuet one, I don't think. Pretty sure it isn't. Looking at it from the front of it, it isn't. So, right. Is that? Oh no, shit. That's not everything. Got more here. Right. These, I picked these up because I thought these were cool. Found some old badges. So I found this old Sonic MGM like badge. One for Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker. This random ET, and what I'm guessing is the Punisher, but it says the Edge. I don't know. No idea what that is. It's a bit cool. But yeah, in the charity shop, I also found Need for Speed: The Rivals. I didn't know there was a complete edition of it, so I grabbed that. It's American, but I don't matter. Just didn't know it existed. For some reason, I picked up a copy of FIFA 20. I thought it might have some trade credit. It does not. It trades for like a pound. And a copy of Naughty Bear, because I've only got the gold edition of it, so I didn't have the standard one. But the gold one only came out in the States, so I've now got a PAL copy of Naughty Bear, basically. Right, that's it. Got to the end. Been wanting to get through that for a long time. My camera is about to die, so I'm going to end this real quick and say, have fun, people. <laughs>